welcome back again to my channel. As always, I post a new video every Friday, so if you're interested in art-related videos and you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Things are about to get spooky around here. So, it is October and it is Halloween month. Halloween, I feel, gets such a short amount of time to be celebrated because it's only one month of October. Once Halloween's gone on October 31st, it's just Thanksgiving and Christmas and all the other holidays, so Halloween needs some love. So, to start off October, I thought that I would do something very in the spirit of Halloween and the fall in general. Today, as the title says, I will be using all of my orange art supplies to create a drawing. As you can see here, all of my orange markers are missing. I do have other supplies that I have here and I'll show you in a second. But if you like Halloween, stick around. So as for the supplies for today's video, let me just give you a little walkthrough of what I will be using. I have some of my Copic markers, Artify markers, and fine color markers. I picked all of my YR colors along with some other colors that were more on the orangey side, like flesh pink is kind of like an orangey peach color, so I'm gonna count that as orange. I've also got some like brownish oranges and some really bright oranges in here, so I'm going to try to use all of those markers at least once. Here I've got my Arteza water brush pens. So I've got three colors, like a lighter one, a really bright medium orange, and then this brownish darkish orange. Over here I've got fine liner pens. So these are also Arteza and um, they're 0.4 millimeter size. I've got three different colors here. So I'm hoping to give some detail to my artwork with these colors. Same thing with the pencils. I'd like to use the pencils and the fine liners for the detail and outlining. I have these two gel pens. So this is just like an average orange color, but then this is like super neon and bright. So I'm hoping to give it some kind of pop of color somewhere. And then lastly, I've got this watercolor. It's in a tube. So uh, unlike these, this is just, I'm gonna have to dilute it with some water. And to do that, I've got my water brushes here, one that's smaller and one that's a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna do a whole multimedia drawing today with all my orange supplies here. For the artwork itself, I figured it would be best to use a watercolor pad of some sort. I was originally gonna go with multimedia paper, but the one I had was not thick enough to hold the watercolor. It will work decently for my markers, and it should work really well for the watercolor. It's the five and a half by eight and a half inch size of the paper and it's 140 pounds. So let's see what we can make. So real quick before I actually begin the artwork, I just want to swatch all of my art supplies real quick just so I have something to refer to, especially since so many of the colors are similar since they're all oranges. I want to have something where I can look back and I can see exactly what looks like what uh, so I put all the markers on the left side and then pens and pencils go right in the center there and then lastly I tested out the watercolors so everything behaves pretty much how I would expect it to and now it's just about planning where I want to put what. So for this drawing I wanted to do something like I said in the spirit of Halloween and October so I thought, why not do a cute little scene, something a little bit different than what I normally do, which is I normally draw people. Um, so for this one, I wanted to do something different and make a cute little scene with animals and pumpkins. So to draw it, I wanted this to be completely everything is orange. So that also meant no lead pencil like I would normally use, um, which felt a little weird. I picked the lightest orange colored pencil that I had. This is a Prismacolor one, so it's pretty soft and easy to sketch with. However, it was kind of scary to use because I was like, okay, I don't know if this is going to erase if I make a mistake, because sometimes colored pencil does not erase too well. So that kind of made me a little bit nervous, but I figured, hey, everything's orange, so if I really do make a mistake, I can probably color over it. So it wasn't that bad. Um, and as I went, I kind of like had an idea of how I wanted this to look in my head. I made a tiny thumbnail sketch before I started. Uh, that way it would be easier once I actually went onto the paper and just drew straight on it. Uh, I would already have kind of like a game plan. So that's always beneficial is to do a little mini sketch before you actually start your artwork. So for this, I just wanted to add a bunch of cute little details and opportunities to add color. I already started planning in my head that I wanted to use the watercolor for the background since watercolor is the easiest to use when covering a large area and I could I knew I could dilute that with water and make it look interesting so I wanted to save at least some of the watercolor for the background. 
For the cats, I wanted to color them pretty similarly. I, I did the cats in marker, just because um, the marker was a little bit easier for me to shade. I'm more used to markers, because I use them more often. Uh, and so I wanted to include as many shades as I could per, uh, per object or per animal on the, on the page. For the cats, I wanted to do a light orange, but not the uh, vibrant orange that I was already planning to use for the pumpkins, just so they would kind of stand out a little. That's the thing in a uh, piece of art or a painting or whatever it may be that all focuses around the use of one color. You have to kind of do a lot of planning ahead of time, um, because if you're not careful, you might just make it look really flat if you're using, you know, all one of all one shade of orange and they're all kind of next to each other. It'll all just kind of blend together. So you want to make sure that you plan out where to put everything. And that's kind of what I tried to do. Um, I will admit that some of this I was improv as I went along, but I think that's part of the fun um, is to just go in with a rough idea for something like this. But um, yeah, I, I tried to make none of the colors, like, none of the similar colors be too close together. So as you can see here for the pumpkin, I went in with the Arteza water brush pens and kind of blocked down the color where I wanted it to be. And the way these pens work is that once you apply water on top of them or on top of the areas you colored with them, um, they will become watercolor paint-like. So they begin to blend together and it's really easy to work with. So it's kind of like um, simple watercolors if you think about it. Um, you just place them down and you just turn them into watercolor once it's already on the page. Uh, so yeah, they're, they're fun to use and they're interesting. Um, and then for the pumpkin, like I said before with that neon orange gel pen that I had, I knew I wanted to use it for a pop of color and I thought why not use it for the jack-o'-lantern in the center because it's kind of the focal point right in the middle there and normally I would use a bright yellow for this to really make it look like it's glowing but listen we don't got no yellow here we're working with oranges so gotta stick to orange so neon orange is the best I could do and I was like I don't know what else I would do with this neon orange and I want to use it so I figured there was the best spot and I think it looks pretty cool um like in the light it looks a little more interesting like on camera it might be hard to see how bright it is but it's pretty bright uh so that was fun to do and then the rest of the pumpkins I kind of colored them like similarly to the middle pumpkin like similar colors um using the watercolor brushes on the pumpkins themselves like I said I was saving the markers for like the character portion so like the bats and the cats since I knew that I could get more like shading and detail with them, but also I had colors um, that I knew I wasn't going to use on the pumpkins. Like the cats are kind of like a different shade of orange than the bright orange on the pumpkins. So to make everything stand out, I was like, this is the best way to do it. Then uh, I colored in the vines the dark brownish orange, and I realized afterward when I was editing this that the cat's tail I mistook for a vine when I was coloring, and so that's why the tail is brown and not orange like the rest of the cat. Um, so, I mean, I guess it works. Like, you can't really tell if you just saw the painting and then, like, you didn't know it was supposed to be a tail, but, like, now I know and now you all know, so. Um, but that's okay. It happens and it, it fits. So I went in and I used the um, tube of watercolor that I had and this was a lot of fun to do the background with because I was able to get a lot of different like shades of orange with it like making it really bright toward the bottom where the ground would be and then lightening it toward the top. So I had fun doing that and um, then I added in the vines again using the water brush pen that was like the darker brownish orange and then like I said before I used my markers again for the bats like I did with the cats. I used a different color on the bats than I did with the cats just to like use more of my markers um, because I tried to use every supply at least once uh, if I could and I think I did. Maybe like one marker didn't get used because it was like the same as a different one but I tried. <laughs> anyway, that is my painting. So guys, that is my finished art piece. Um, I was really excited to use this notebook because I haven't used it yet and as you can tell this is the first page in it but I really like the way it came out and the way that I was able to get like almost that like glowy neon look in the eyes with the neon gel pen. 
So if you liked what I did with my orange supplies and you'd like to see more like this, please let me know in the comments below. Suggest more videos for the month of Halloween. I do have a few ideas, but I want to hear what you guys want to see. As always, you can find all of my links in my description below. I've got my Etsy shop, my Instagram, and all my other links below. So check those out if you want to support me other places. So until my next video, thank you guys so much for watching. Happy Halloween, happy October, happy fall. And I will see you guys next Friday in my next video. Bye-bye.